Cinderella, Cinderella. There was once a rich man whose wife lay sick, and when she felt her end drawing near, she called to her only daughter to come near her bed, and said, "Dear child, be pure." And good, and God will always take care of you. And I will look down upon you from heaven, and will be with you. Pierce, ah,、uh, this term dedicated for religion. Someone who is very religious, very devout, God-fearing. They are just going, or they are spiritual, very prayerful, or holy, godly, saintly, dedicated, reverent, dutiful, etc. Someone who who is very pure. And then she closed her eyes and expired. She expired. She breathed last time. It is run out. Become invalid. I hear. If it is a period of time. Comes to an end. Expire. And if you talk about person, he or she dies. The mother closed her eyes and expired. The maiden went every day to her mother's grave and wept. The driver. The driver. It is a tomb. Cemetery plot. A vault. A burial chamber. Mausoleum. Time dead. And was always pious and good. When the winter came, the snow covered the drive. With a white covering, and when the sun came in, the early spring, and melted it away, the man took to himself another wife. Her father married another woman. The new wife brought two daughters home. With her, she has with previous husband two daughters. Of course, they were beautiful and fair in appearance, but at heart were black and ugly. And then began very evil times. Very evil period for the poor stepdaughter. The poor stepdaughter. It is stupid courageous to sit in the same room with us. Said they. Those who eat food must earn it. Out up out upon her for kitchen maid. They took away her pretty dresses, and put on her an old grey. Curtle, and gave her wooden shoes to wear. Curtle, a kind of petticoat. Just look now. Just look now at the brown princess. How she decked out, 
how she is dressed out, dress up. To deck, a kind of decorate, be decor adorn, ornament, or if you are talking about a garden or the area, it has a kind of platform or terrace. It is negative. And when it is taught about clothes, you talk about dress up or a tie or gap. Just look how the brown princess, how she is decked out, how she is dressed up. Cry the laughing. They say aloud and laugh at the same time. And then they send her into the kitchen. There she was obliged to do heavy work from morning to night. She got up early in the morning, draw water, she drew water, make the fires, cook, and wash for every member of the family. Besides that, the sister did their utmost to torment her. They maximize the torment to her. At most, the greatest, the maximum, at most, at most, most extreme, at greatest, to torment her, to pain her, to give pain to. Type of agony, suffering, torture, anguish, misery, or distress. The two sisters mocking her and throwing peas and lentils among the ashes and setting her to pick them up. Lentils, lentils. Kind of high protein pongs, they dry and then suck and cook before eating. In the evenings, when she was quite tired out with her hard day's work, she had no bed. She had no bed to lie on, but was obliged to rest on the herd among the cinders. In the evenings, when she was quite tired out with her hard day's work, she had no bed to lie on, but was obliged to rest on the hearth among the cinders. Cinders. On the hearth. And as she onward looked dusty and dirty, a lot of dust, and a lot of dirt too, they named her Cinderella. It happened one day that the father went to the fair and he asked his two stepdaughters what he should bring back for them. Fine clothes, said one, pearls and jewels, said the other. But what will you have, Cinderella, said he. The first trick. The trick, father, that strikes against your head on the way home. That is what I should like you to bring me. The first trick, father, that strikes against your head on the way home. That is what I should like you to bring me. So, he bought for the two stepdaughters five clothes, pearls, and jewels. And on his way back. As he rode through a green lane, 
I had to to struggle again his head. And he broke it off. He broke it off and carried it home with him. And when he reached home, he gave to the stepdaughters what they had ordered. What they had wished for. And to Cinderella, he gave the house of trick. She thanked him and went to her mother's grave and planted his trick there, weeping so bitterly that the tears fell upon, fell upon it and watered it. And it flourished and became a fine tree. Cinderella went to see it three times a day and wept and prayed. And each time a white bird rose up from the tree. And if she utter any wish, the bird brought her whatever she had wished for. To utter, say the lion, to complete, no, the verb, he emit, let out, give or produce, to say or to speak, to voice, that is utter. And if she utter any wish, the bird brought her whatever she had wished for. Now, if came to pass that the king ordained a festival, now it came to pass, not if here, the king ordained a festival that should last for three days, and to which all the beautiful young women of that country were bidden. So that the king's son might choose a bride from among them. From among them. When the two stepdaughters heard that they two were bidden to appear, they were invited to appear. Every young beautiful maidens in the country were invited to appear to come to the festival. They felt very pleased, and they called Cinderella and said. Come out here, brush our shoes, and make our buckles fast. Buckles. A flat, typical rectangular frame with a hinge pin used for joining the ends of a belt or strap. We are going to the wedding feast at the king's castle. At the king's castle. Come out here, brush our shoes, and make our buckles fast. We're going to the wedding feast at the king's castle. Cinderella, when she heard it, couldn't have crying. She cried nonstop, for she too would have loved to go to the dance, and she begged her stepmother to allow her. What? You, Cinderella," said she. "In all your dust and dirt, dust and dirt, do you want to go to festival? You that had no dress and no shoes, do you want to dance?" But as she persisted in asking, she continued to ask. Persevere. Continue firmly or obstinately in opinion or course of action, in spite of difficulty or opposition, or in spite of failure. Cinderella persisted in asking, and at last, the stepmother said, "I have strewed." A dish full of plenty in the ashes. 
And if you can pick them all up again. In two hours, you may go with us. I have strewn a dish full of lentils in the ashes, and if you can pick them up all up again in two hours, you may go with us. Then the maiden went to the back door that led into the garden and called out, "O、oh, gentle doves, O、oh, turtle doves, and all the birds that be." The lentils that in ashes lie, come and pick up for me. The good must be put in the dish, and the bad you may eat it if you wish. The good must be put in the dish, the bad you may eat it if you wish. Then they came to the kitchen window. Two white doves, and after them some turtle doves, and at last a crowd of all the birds under heaven, chirping and fluttering. The sound of birds, and they aligned it among the ashes. Aligned. The descent. From a train or bus, or other form of transport, they descend from the air and settle down, and they alight it among the ashes, and the doves nod it with their heads and began to pick, peck, pick, peck. And then all the orders began to pick, pack, pick, pack, and put all the good trains into the dish. Before an hour was over, all was done, and they flew away. Then the maiden brought the dish to her stepmother, feeling joyful. She felt joyful. She felt happy. I'm thinking that now she should go to the fish, but the stepmother said no. But the stepmother said no. Her stepmother said no, Cinderella. You have no rope of clothes, and you do not know how to dance, and you would be laughed at, laughed at. And when Cinderella cried for disappointment, she added. The mother added, "If you can pick two dishes full of lentils out of the ashes, nice and clean, you shall go with us." Thinking to herself, "For does it not piece of possible mission impossible?" When she had strewed two dishes full of lentils among the ashes, the maiden went through the back door into the garden and cried. Oh, gentle doves! Oh, turtle doves! And all the birds that be, the lentils that in the ash lie, come and pick up for me. The good must be put in the dish, and the bad you may eat if you wish. So they came to the kitchen window, two wild doves, and then some turtle doves, and at last a crowd of all the other birds under heaven, chirping, fluttering, and they aligned to the moldy ashes. And the doves nodded with their heads and began to pick, pack, pick, pack. And then all the others began to pick, pack, pick, pack, and put all the good trains into the dish. And before half an hour was over, it was all done. And they flew away. Then the maiden took the dishes to the stepmother, feeling joyful and thinking that now she should go with them to the fish. But she said, "On this is of no good to you. You cannot come with us, for you have no proper clothes and cannot dance. You would put us to shame. You would put us to shame." Then she turned her back on poor Cinderella and made haste. She hasted. She made it quick. 
she made hash to set out, to go, to go out, to set off, to set out. With her two brown daughters, and as there was no one left in the house, Cinderella went to her mother's grave under the hazel bush and cried, "Little tree, little tree, shade over me, that silver and gold may come down and cover me." Then the bird threw down a dress of gold and silver. From heaven, the bird threw down, let down a dress of gold and silver, and a pair of slippers embroidered with silk and silver. And in all haste, she put on the dress and went to the festival. But her stepmother and sisters did not know her, and thought she must be a foreign princess. She looks so beautiful in her golden dress. She looks so beautiful in her golden dress. Of Cinderella, they never thought at all. They never thought of Cinderella at all, and supposed that she was sitting at home, airy picking the lentils, airy picking, doing a. Boring job, arid. The adjective arid is a kind of dry, dried up, very having or little or no rain or not interesting at all, lacking interest, excitement or meaning. Arid picking the lentils out of the ashes. The king's son came to meet her and took her by the hand and danced with her, and she he refused to stand up with anyone else so that he might not be, so that he might not be, so that he might not be obliged to let go her hand. He refused to let go. Her hand, and when anyone came to claim it, he answered. The prince answered, "She is my partner." He revenged. He revented her from approaching by others. And when the evening came, she wanted to go home. But the prince said he would go with her to take care of her. For he wanted to see where the beautiful maiden lived, but she escaped him and jumped up into the pigeon house. Then the prince waited until the father came and told him the strange maiden had jumped into the pigeon house. The father thought to himself, "The father of Cinderella, of course." It cannot surely be Cinderella. It cannot surely be her, my poor daughter. And called for axes and hatches, and had the pigeon house cut down. But there was no one in it. And when they entered the house, there sat Cinderella in her dirty clothes among the cinders, and a little oil lamp burned dimly, burned lightly in the chimney. With a fan light, not very bright light, fan an indistinct way, not very clear, not clear light. For Cinderella had been very quick, and had jumped out of the pigeon house again, and had run to the hazel bush, and there she had taken off her beautiful dress and had laid it on the grave, and the bird had carried it away again. And then she had put on her little red kirtle again, and had sat down in the kitchen among the cinders, and had sat down in the kitchen among the cinders. The next day, when the festival began anew, began another time.
for another time began anew. And the parents and stepsisters had gone to it. Cinderella went to the house of bush and cried, Little tree, little tree, shake over me. That silver and gold may come down and cover me. Then the bird cast down. Then the bird drew down. Or then the bird descended. A still more splendid dress, more beautiful, more splendid dress than on the day before. And when she appeared in it among the guests, everyone was astonished at her beauty. The prince had been waiting until she came, and he took her hand and danced with her alone. And when anyone else came to invite her, he said, "She is my partner." And when the evening came, she wanted to go home, and the prince followed her, for he wanted to see what a house, what house she belonged, what house she belonged to. But she broke away from him and ran to the garden at the back of the house. There stood a fine large tree. Bearing splendid pears, she leapt as lightly as a squirrel among the branches, and the prince did not know what had become of her. So he waited until the father came. The prince waited until the father of Cinderella returned, and then he told him that the strange maiden had rushed from him, and that he thought. She had gone up into the pear tree. The father thought to himself, "It cannot surely be Cinderella," and called for an axe. And fell the tree. And fell the tree, and cut down the tree. To chop down, to cut down, to hack down, to saw down, or to clear. The tree, but there was no one in it. And when they went into the kitchen, there sat Cinderella among the cinders as usual, for she had got down the other side. For she had got down the other side, of the tree, and had taken back her beautiful clothes to the bird. On her bush, and had put on her old gray coat again. On the third day, when the parents and the stepchildren had set off, Cinderella went again to her mother's grave and said to the tree, "Little tree, little tree, shake over me, that silver and gold may come down and cover me." Then the bird cast down a dress. The light of which had never been seen for splendors and brilliancies, and slippers that were of gold. Slippers made of gold. And when she appeared in distress at the fish, nobody knew what to say for wonderment. The prince danced with her alone, and if anyone else asked her, he answered, "She is my partner." And when it was evening, Cinderella wanted to go home, and the prince was about to go with her. When she went, when she ran past him so quickly that he could not follow her, but he had laid a blank and had caused all the steps to be spread with pitch, pitch. It is kind of cement coated pitch, bitumen, or asphalt, or tar. So that she, so that as she drushed down them, the left shoe of the maiden remained sticking in it. The prince picked it up and saw that it was of gold and very small and slender. Small and slender. Small and slender. Dress fully thin. The next morning, 
he went to the father and told him that none should be his bride, save the one whose foot the golden shoe should fit. Nobody will be his bride, other than the one whose foot the golden shoe should fit. Then the two sisters were very glad because they had pretty feet. The eldest went to her room to try on a shoe, and her mother stood by, but she could not get her right toe into it, for the shoe was too small. Then her mother handed her a knife and said, "Cut the toe off, for when you are queen, you will never have to go on foot." So the girl cut her toe off, squeezed her foot into the shoe. Squeezed to compress, to crush, a squash. Okay, to flatten. Conceal the pain, to hide the pain. Hidden, not visible, out of sight, for example. Or the verb to conceal. To mask, obscure, secret, and went down to the prince. Then he took her with him on his horse, as his bride, and rode off. They had to pass by the rave, and there sat the two pigeons on a hazel bush and cried, "There they go! There they go!" There is blood on her shoe. There, the shoe is too small. Not the right bride at all. Then the prince looked at her shoe and saw the blood flowing, and he turned his horse round and took the false bride home again, saying she was not the right one, and that the other sister must try on the shoe. So. So she went into her room to do so, and got her toes comfortably in, but her heel was too large. Then her mother handed her the knife, saying, "Cut a piece of your heel. When you are queen, you will never have to go on foot." So the girl cut a piece of her heel, and thrust her foot into the shoe. Thrust. To push very strongly, to force, to stick, drive, or push something or someone suddenly, violently in the specific, specified direction. She concealed the pain and went down to the prince, who took his bride before him on his horse and rode off. When he passed by, has a bush. The tradition said, "Then cry, there they go, there they go. There is blood on her shoe. The shoe is too small, not the right bride at all." Then the prince looked at her foot and saw how the blood was flowing from the shoe, and standing the white stocking, standing the white stocking, to stain, to stain. To discolor, mark a muddy or blemish, to stain clothes, and he turned his horse round and brought the false bride home again. This is not the right one," said he. "Have you no other daughter?" "No," said the man. Only my dead wife left behind her a little stunted Cinderella, stunted Cinderella, a very small, underdeveloped child, small, undersized, diminutive, or stunted. Okay, restricted, retard, retard, slow, cub. It is impossible that she can be the bride. 
But the king's son ordered her to be sent for, but the mother said, Oh no, she is much too dirty. I could not let her be seen, but he would have her fed. And so Cinderella had to appear first. She washed her face and hands quite clean and went in and curtsied to the prince. To curtsy. To curtsy. To bend one's knee. Genuflect. A kind of women as a girl's form of greeting. Made by bending the knees with one foot in front of another person. First, she washed her face and hands quite clean and went in and closely to the prince, who held down to her the golden shoe. Then, she sat down on a stone, a stool, small chair without arms, a seat without a back or arms, typically resting on three or four legs or on a single pedestal. On a stool, drew her foot out of the heavy wooden shoes, and slipped it into the wooden, the golden one, which fitted perfectly. She sat down on a stone, drew her foot out of the heavy wooden shoe, and slipped it into the golden one, which fitted it perfectly. And when she stood up, the prince looked into her face. He knew again the beautiful maiden that had danced with him, and he cried, "This is the right bride." The stepmother and the two sisters were thunderstruck. Thunder, thunderstruck. And drew pale. The skin became white. Drew pale with anger. But he put Cinderella before him. On his horse and rode off. And as they passed the hazel bush, the true one pigeon cried, "There they go, there they go. No blood on her shoe. The shoe is not too small. The right bride is she after all." And when they had heard the cry, they came flying after, and pushed, and pushed on Cinderella's shoulders. One on the right and the other on the left, and so remained. And when her wedding with the prince was appointed to be held, the four sisters came, hoping to curry favor. Curry. To curry. To curry favor. To ingratiate oneself with someone through obsequious behavior. For example, a wimpish attempt to curry favor with the new bosses. The true sister tried to curry favor and to take part in festivities, so as the bridal procession, bridal procession, went to the church. The eldest walked on the right side, and the younger on the left. And the pigeons pick out an eye of each of them. And as they returned, the elder was on the left side, and the younger on the right. And the pigeon pick out the other eye of each of them, the other eye of each of them. And so they were condemned to go blind for the rest of the days. The rest of their life, the rest of their days, because of their wickedness and falsehood. So as the bridal procession went to the church, the elders walk on the right side and the younger on the left, and the pigeon pick out an eye of each of them. And as they return, the elder was on the left side and. The younger on the right, and the pigeon pick out the other eye of each of them, and so they were condemned to go blind for the rest of the days because of their wickedness and falsehood. Thus is the end of the story about Cinderella. Now come 
the expression to curry favor. The expression to curry favor in the French tale, the Roman, the Fauvel. Fauvel is a horse who represents the base sign of human nature. His name is made up from the initials of six scenes, including flattery and avarice. Fauvel becomes so powerful and rich, he is courted by corrupt officers who try to win favors by combining, by combing his hair, comb the hair of the horse. Okay, corrupt officials. This translates in. The 15th century English as to to curry fauvel, to curry a horse is to brush it. Fauvel became favor through a similarity of form and a closeness in the meaning. To curry favor is to seek or gain favors by flattery.